Good morning. Welcome to April 12th. My name is Jane Prine. I'm the interim superintendent at Squim School District. I want to welcome everybody back after spring break last week and what a glorious week we are looking at this week with the sun out and blue skies. So it's a great week to, to be back. Um, at this time, I would like to have Sonia Bittner talk to us about um, up and coming um, informational items with our coronavirus. Sonia. Good morning, Dr. Prine. Thank you. So um, I'm going to refer to my notes off and on. I have a lot of new information because we have all of last week's information and heaven knows it doesn't uh, stay still for very long. So. Uh, it can be kind of hard to understand where we're at with the COVID pandemic at this time. You know, it's on one hand, it's really great. So many people are being vaccinated. Uh, the vaccines on April 15th will open to all, including 16 year olds and up for the Pfizer vaccine and 18 year olds and up for both the Moderna and Johnson Johnson vaccine. Of course, uh, students would need uh, consent from their uh, family members for that. We no longer have to go to the Washington Department of Health website eligibility tool to sign up. But on the other hand, if you refer to our Clallam County COVID site, you can see that we've had more than double our cases and we are up to 87 per 100,000 people. And that's a really dramatic rise. And that does include the B117 variant now in Clallam County. That variant can make it easier to catch that variant of COVID, although the mitigations and everything we put in place protect us the same. So there has been some discussion and some Washington state counties are even having to go back in phases. Dr. Berry has said that it's possibility that if our it's a possibility that if our Clallam County COVID cases reach as many as 100 per 100,000, we may have to go back to phase two. So the situation is showing that the dramatic increase in the number of cases of COVID is among our families, especially those with school aged children, um, whether it be a grade school all the way through college students. And uh, it's getting harder to contact trace because people aren't getting tested right away. And I think some of that is a misunderstanding that if you're um, a young adult or a child that, you know, COVID isn't that bad uh, and that the person will get through it just fine, which is of course true. However, their ability to spread it goes on even with very small or uh, no symptoms in some cases. So it's really important for us to be able to contact trace and that is based on testing, of course. So if, uh, if your student is even out for the sniffles, which it could be COVID, for more than a day or two, we're gonna suggest uh, that, you get, that you get them tested. Um, the updated guidance coming from the state is showing that if you're fully vaccinated and two weeks out from your second shot, that it is safer to gather indoors with others who also meet that criteria. The CDC has re revised their travel guidance saying that those who are fully vaccinated and again two weeks out from that second vaccine may resume domestic travel and don't need to get tested for that. They don't need to self quarantine after travel. They don't need to get tested before international travel unless it's required by the destination that you're going to and they do not need to self quarantine after arriving back in the United States and those are for the for the fully vaccinated. However, if you're not vaccinated, which um, many of the people under 50 in Clallam County are not, they are being asked to avoid non essential travel. They're certainly asked to um, self quarantine for 10 days upon return to the state or seven days with a COVID test. So, and we are very strictly enforcing the county's guidance at school. Uh, the difficulty is that in addition to revising the travel guidelines, the Department of Health is now investigating reports of breakthrough, uh, breakthrough COVID for people who are fully vaccinated. Uh, it says that large scale clinical studies have found that COVID-19 vaccines, of course, do resist, result in reducing the risk of getting COVID by up to 95%, but that's not 100%. 
So there's ongoing tests right now of people who are getting COVID who've been fully vaccinated. And, you know, it's important for us to remember how COVID spreads. Um, the, it's the combination of actions that we use to protect ourselves, not just social distancing and not just masking, but limiting activities with unvaccinated people from outside your home and avoiding, avoiding indoor crowded spaces, certainly wearing masks. And if you're having symptoms, and for some people, that might just be the sniffles. Uh, for somebody else, it might just be a headache certainly consider getting tested if those are not just a single day event or unusual for you, or if you've been exposed to anybody with COVID. So um, we are going to be really closely scrutinizing our situation at school so that we can maintain our ongoing efforts and try to make sure that there's been um, no exposures at school. Thanks very much. Sonia, thank you for that report. Um, it's very important that people returning from out of state take heed because we don't want any in-school transmissions of coronavirus. So thank you again, Sonia. And next we will be talking to Darlene Appland, who is going to talk to us about our capital projects process and where we are in that process. So Darlene. Okay. Well, um, we are in the middle of the process for the request for qualifications for our capital management services. And we have until um, April 19th, which is this next Monday at four o'clock uh, to get all of your information back to us here at the school district. And then once we have everyone's um, applications back, we will be uh, looking through all of those applications and moving forward with our process. So. Uh, we, I, I know that we have uh, several companies that have come through me to request more information, and I know that you can just go out onto our web page under the business uh, tab, and you can click on the RFQ Capital Project Management button and get all the information that you need to submit your applications to us. Thank you, Darlene, and I just want to let everybody know that our capital projects is over a four year period for $15 million. So we will be doing lots of upgrades and modernizations to all of our buildings. So thank you very much. And next we have Victoria Ballant, our human resources director is going to talk about recruitment. That's always fun. Thank you, Dr. Prine and happy Monday, Squim. Things are getting super exciting here in the HR department this week. We are gearing up for a virtual career fair hosted by Washington School Personnel Association. This is when we get to meet folks who are interested in working with us here in SQUIM and hold conversations to determine if we should um, well, swipe right, I guess, because if you have perused any of our postings, you will see that when we list the qualifications for a candidate, we don't just include technical abilities and certifications. We include a list of those things that make a person a good fit for who we are striving to be as a district. We're looking for people who are givers of hope, have great attitudes and a growth mindset people who model what it means to make mistakes and then grow from them. People who are comfortable not having all the answers but are eager to problem solve. We're looking for creativity, people who are open to trying new things, natural relationship builders, just hard workers and nurturers. In the HR department, we are really hunting for treasures because the students of SQUIM deserve folks who will hunt for treasures in them. If you or someone you know is an exceptional person who not only possesses the technical qualifications for a job, but can express these innate qualities, we just hope that you will consider SQUIM School District so we can just fill our treasure chest full of gold for our students. So, and I wanted to say, if you are interested in participating in the career fair, you can visit WSPA.net and follow the prompts in order to register. So take care everyone and thank you, Dr. Prime. Thank you, Victoria. 
And on that note, we will just recap what we've heard today. First of all, we heard from Sonia Bittner and our um, nursing department, our Department of Health for Squim School District on all of the updates with traveling and uh, what is required there. Darlene talked about our capital projects, um, RFQs, requests for qualifications from different companies to oversee our $15 million worth of projects. And Victoria talked about our recruitment. So lots of exciting things going on in the Squim School District. And I invite all of you to join us on Friday mornings at 6 a.m. for the Rise and Pride podcast. And on that note, we want to wish everybody a wonderful week. And it, again, is April 12th, and I'm Jane Prine. And we want to say thank you for joining in. Bye-bye. <laughs>